Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on a very different method for making vegetation for games. This method, I'm gonna show you all the way how to do this, but just so you can get a little overview on how this is done. It's a very uncommon method, if I'm being honest, but in my personal opinion, mainly if you're doing like lots of vegetation for your game, this is the fastest and the one you're gonna get the best quality over to make your vegetation. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. So first thing, I'm going to add a cube in here and I'm going to scale down in the Z axis and scale a little bit in the Y axis also. Awesome, so now I'm going to add a few loop cuts, maybe five in here, and I'm going to select the center one and I'm going to lower it a little bit. And I'm going to do the same for the borders. I'm thinking that maybe scaling this down a little bit more. And I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to scale in the Z axis just so it's just to be a little bit more subtle, these curves. I'm going to select the center one again and I'm going to bevel it. Something like that should be enough. Now I'm going to add a bevel modifier in here. I think one segment should be enough. And then I'm going to add a subdivision surface. I'm going to decrease a little bit the amount of bevel I have in here, maybe even more. And I'm going to increase the subdivision. This is going to look fine. I'm going to add a few extra loop cuts in the x-axis just to make sure the whole mesh is going to have a kind of the same geometry going around through the entire mesh. I'm going to add a little bit more loop cuts. This should be fine. Let me see if a little bit more bevel maybe should look good. I'm going to apply the bevel and then I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to select all of the faces that are pointing upwards in this loop in here. You can just select one of them and then control click the other face and then all of them is going to be selected. And with that, I'm going to extrude that again. So in here, what we're doing is making the stem of the leaf. And usually what happens is that the leaves is going being a little bit smoother through the end and the stem is a little bit thinner. So we're going to also do that. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hide all of the rest of the model. Actually, I'm going to control plus and I'm going to hide all of the rest of the model. And then I'm going to select only this part in here and I'm going to activate the proportional editing. Now I can scale it in the X axis to make sure that it's going thin Maybe I can change the proportional editing a mode in here. Maybe sharp or linear is gonna work better. Yeah, something like that should look fine. And now I'm going to do the same in the X axis, but I'm going to make sure that I'm selecting this edge in here and I'm going to change the transform pivot point to the active element. And I'm going to do the same again, but in the X axis. Also, now it's going thinner. And let me see if maybe doing this with less strength can help it going a little bit smoother. It's not helping much. Maybe what we can do is do that by hand in here. You want to make sure that you're activating the symmetry so both sides are the same in here. Yeah, I don't like that much. I feel like it's getting actually bigger, which is the opposite of what I want. Hmm, maybe that. Um, I'll increase this part a little bit. That should be fine. I think the stem should be a little bit bigger. Maybe like that. Now, the only thing I'm going to do is apply the subdivision uh, modifier and I'm going to rename this to whatever I want. My foliage, base, model, high. Okay, so now we have this base in here. So now what I'm going to do, the way I like to do this, and you can do this the other way around if you like. What I like to do is first have the low poly model of the plant, just so I have some reference to where should I be putting the tail and everything. So for me, that's easier, but you can do the other way around if you want. If you want, you can go to the brush right now and sculpt everything. And then you bring back to Blender so you can make your low poly on top of that. I like to do the other way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease this a little bit and I'm going to add a plane in here. So I'm going to bring this plane down a little and I'm going going to start making the general shape of my leaf. So I'm going to delete this part and add a mirror modifier. I'm going to increase the size and, and add a few loop cuts in here. Mm -hmm. So the leaf that I'm going to try to do has kind of a sh hard shape. So I'm going to try to do something like that so I can start. And then it starts getting thinner to the end.
Awesome, now that I have the low poly ready, I'm going to bring those two to ZBrush so I can actually sculpt the leaves details. So here in ZBrush, I would have both my models in here. So I'm going to just to hide the low poly one and I'm going to start sculpting the details from my leaf. So I'm going to start adding a few details. So the main ones are like the same I already have in here. So I'm going to add a few creases like this one in here. Maybe I should add a little bit more subdivision in this. It might be a little helpful. And now I can start adding these creases, something like this. I think for my leaf, what makes a little of sense is if you would follow the shape of it. Maybe I can see it. And yeah, there's some, there's one in here. Maybe a little bit of curve in this. Yeah, this one. And I guess maybe on this one, actually I'm going to do a little bit of a different symmetry. I think it's a waste if I use the exact same shape on both of them. Maybe something like this. And I can, after I finish this, I can bring this to Blender and I can adapt my, my leaf to work with this. And maybe another one in here. I think this one should be a little smaller. I think it would be nice if I add a little bit of more curve on this part. Let's see if this works. I'm unsure if maybe I should add, and now I can add the symmetry back and maybe add a little bit more curve on this one, a little bit more crease, and maybe even the upper part is thinner and then it's, it's bigger and then it gets thinner again. Yeah, maybe that will work. I'll just make this a little bit smoother transition to this. Yeah, this should be fine. And you see, there's not a lot of details that I'm adding here, but I guess this should be enough for what we want uh, for this leaf. Let's see if there's anything more that we want to add. Maybe some details like this. It's little details, nothing many people will see. But just to add a little of directionality, I always like to add a little bit. This should be fine. Now I'm going to export this again and I'll make the adaptations in Blender and I'll bring this to Blender so we can start texturing this. Here in Simpsons Blender, I have my low poly model and I'll bring my high poly into the low poly. I'll make sure to increase the rear distance so I can have all of the details in the bake and I'll increase the output size. Okay, so now in my case, I have this smart material in here that should cover most of what we need in here, but I'll make sure to go through the basics of, of what this is set it up to do so we can repeat that on your side also. One thing I need to do is activate this opacity in this project. So I'm going to the texture set settings and I'm put up a, a opacity channel. And I'm also, I'm going to go into the shader settings and I'm going to change the shader to one that accepts opacity. So now one thing I need to do is, you see there's a straight line in here. It's just one line that I usually use so I can make sure that the stem has the right opacity when the stem is not close to the actual leaf. Because sometimes like the opacity and the UV border distance, we delete the opacity in the stem because of that. In this case, we don't actually even need this. The basics of how this works is this part is the most important one. This part is what makes the kind of this smooth transitions to the leaf and how this works is the first layer what I'm doing is just using UV border distance to go through all of the borders of the UVs and I'm decreasing the opacity in this part. On top of that I'm also decreasing the height a little bit so we have this kind of bump going on in here so that's why the height is being used for. So yeah you can also do that in the this yellow layer that I did. It can increase a little bit the normal map helps a little bit sometimes. The second layer I'm using just to change the color basically. If I increase this you can see adding this yellowish borders to it. I feel like it kind of helps to give this leaf aspect to it and kind of like an old leaf or something. Usually usually like the green with some yellowish brings this like nature and all of that vibes to, to your texture so I like to add this to the texture a little bit. And the last one is to add a little bit more depth to it so it's just a border with kind of a name image occlusion to it. The most important part it helps give this depth to the leaf and the rest is basically just texturing. I'm actually using another smart material as a base but yeah you can use your own like in here i can change a little bit the parameters can help a little bit i can decrease the image occlusion maybe and also one thing i think would be cool and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a paint to the opacity and i'm going to add this in here and then actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this in a separate layer and do this extra i'm going to delete this add a new paint delete this and this and now i'm going to add an anchor point point extra mask and i'm going to add this to the other ones also and change to add in the blending mode. I'm going to do the same to the darker. Let's see how this works. I'm going to do this so I can add a few holes to my leaf, maybe in here. I'm not going to add that much holes because it's going to look a little bit weird. I think that should be fine. I'm going to decrease a little bit the yellow because I increased just to show how, how this was working. So yeah, with this, we already have a leaf that works pretty well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this to Blender so I can actually make a plant out of it. And I bring this to Unreal so I can see how it looks. And then maybe afterwards, I can adjust a little the textures here in the Substance Painter.
Let me show you real quick how this works. So instead of actually making a high poly for each leaf, what we do is we have a mesh, a basic mesh like this. This will work as a kind of a way of extracting a leaf out of a kind of a texture that you're gonna make on top of this. So we have this base, which you have this kind of a curve that the leaves should sometimes have and they stem. And on top of this, we usually bring this to the brush and we have all of the geometry that we need. And then we're gonna sculpt the details somewhat like this. And, it, and it's really simple. You can see that that's pretty simple. And then we make the low poly, the shape that we want on top of this. And when we bring to Substance Painter, we can bake and extract the leaf out of the high poly that we made. And after this, we can place all together and have a beautiful bush or plant with the texture that we made. So let me show how to actually do it. Thank you for watching the entire video. If you like the results, please leave a like and say, subscribe to our channel. If there's anything you like to comment or you like to see in the next videos, please let me know in the comments. I'll make sure to try to answer any questions or anything that you have also. See you in the next video. Bye.